Welcome to another episode of Modern Rock. So today I thought I'd go through the South African team as I'll be bring, bringing out some videos covering some of the, the top teams uh, selection choices and ideas and concepts going to the World Cup and I think where they're trying to focus their players. So I thought I was the African team, their wild, wild cards and also the top team I think we could field in, 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 the, in the final or in the beginning of the tournament. What, the, what is the top team we could field in the tournament in my opinion? Obviously it's not raw. So let's get into it. First things first, I think the biggest question on everybody's lips would be since the African camp currently sitting, we got the 36 players uh, training together, but four of them have already been sent back to um, playing Curry Cup this weekend, which does diminish, in my opinion, their chances of getting into the, to, to the World Cup, as it's, why, why would you not be training with them if you're planning to take them away? But let's get to the first big wild card, is Kwaka versus Alstad. Kwaka has is a is an outstanding player. He really has showed his worth in in the, the green and gold, but also has always shown his worth in, in, in uh, Super Rugby and every two, and the Curry Cup. So I don't think you can argue, and obviously in sevens also. So I don't think you can ever discount his position in the team. He's got a different playing style to the rest of the forward pack. I feel he's a smaller player. He doesn't really do the brute force strategy that most of the other forwards of South Africa plays and it leans towards our style. It's a little bit of a counter. Although, on the other hand, many people have argued that that's something that we need as it gives us another man um, in center when we need it because of his uh, pace and ability to uh, actually do cover defense. He's really, really shown his, his worth in cover defense and also gives us, a, uh, us the ability of a sniping attack on the sides of the scrum which many teams have, can't counter. So both of those give him a really good plus. On the other side, Alstad is the classical South African flanker, also a but bigger, stronger player who really can bruise, but also his his other uh, ace up his sleeve is his ability to play 6-7 and even block in a, in a tight, if it need be. Uh, not that we've got depth issues in either of those positions, but the World Cup is a long competition that takes many games and re relatively regular games and bruising ones in that. So to have a player who can switch those positions really is useful and definitely cannot be undermined or I laughed down at. So yeah, both of those players have really brings them to the table and have shown their worth in the green and gold. But for me, I'm going to pick Kwaka. Um, for the simple reason that I think it's good to bring in another X Factor in South Africa's rugby platform. It's something that people have argued for many years about that we do, we do tend to rest on our laurels on attacking format and to have that extra X Factor is great in that flank position. Also, because uh, in my opinion South Africa's centre pairing is probably the weakest part of our field, uh, especially depth wise, Kwaka plays a valuable position in being able to slot in there when need be and also put an X Factor to our attack in the back line when needed. So both of those give me his upper hand, although it is a tight race. Some other players I really wish, um, which I'm sad about going to Curry Cup already, is players like Alstad and Kuborka. Both of them, uh, well, Alstad, Irstazen, uh, both of them have really shown some uh, skill, worth, and uh, real hunger for the green and gold. And uh, I think that's beautiful to see as a South African fan. Irstazen, a bit of a battering ram. People have, like his, his detractors will definitely say more of a battering ram, not really the X-Factor player we need. That is fair, and I think that's probably his biggest counter-argument. He does tend to, especially when the game gets a bit rough, he tends to just turn into a battering ram and doesn't really give the, the backline, his outside center and wings, space to perform. Uh, as often, he will just run in with the ball, closing the space needed, and doesn't really play the field as much as some of the other fly, uh, centers we've got on the field. Uh, Kabok, on the other hand, and sadly going to be played out most likely by his uh, Bulls teammate Trevor Nyakane, as Trevor has just shown his worth leaps and bounds. That Argentina game pretty much stamped his ticket to um, Japan, and he's already on the plane pretty much. Whereas Kabulka unfortunately couldn't rise to that level, but that's not being said that he is still not a world class um, scrummager and is definitely something for the future. A great prospect for the Blue Bulls locally, and that's something good to see for them. So it's sad to see them maybe not make the team, although to be said, nothing set in stone, so I'm holding time to them. Um, I do think Gaborka would be nice to see come through. Airstazen, I think there's a bit more competition on that front, so we'll see how it goes. So let's get to my top team, the team I feel should be the best team we can get. So at 15, obviously the choice of being Vili or Galant, there's some choice, obviously Fronstein could fill that position if need be. Uh, sad omission from the squad that I think would be really great, but isn't there. 
is uh, Cohen Bosch. He really has had an, um, has had consistent great seasons and has shown that it's, his size might he might be more diminutive, but has not let that down. Just like Cheston Colby, that doesn't affect his game at all. And his X factor on counter attack is insane, cutting through many, many, many defenses in this last Super Rugby and previous Super Rugby and his uh, junior career. Especially considering that it show, his, his skills are showcased in the fact that the Sharks are the best performing team against New Zealand teams this year. And I'm quite sad to see him not uh, being able to showcase that in a World Cup where I think he'd be a great X-Factor player for it. Villeneuve is my choice, although he has had an average season. Now, not, that's not a bad thing. Um, Villeneuve is actually, unfortunately, he was for a long time labelled as a kind of player that has a, good, a great game or a shitty game. So, saying that... It's good to be in between with a average player, so, uh, having average games where you'd rather have more consistency. I'll give it to him, but he is still the player that, when it when the time comes, can showcase world class vision and world class uh, positioning. So I definitely think so, and he is amazing under the uh, under the ball. So going into my the wings, I'm 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 going for uh, the option obviously, obviously multiple options here, but the big the big players, Cheslin Colby, I think has posted his ticket. He's gone. It's there. He's done. The, the bigger question, obviously, a lot of people blips in South Africa is between Mpimpi and uh, Nkosi. Uh, Mpimpi was play, played most of rugby championship, and Nkosi got a game here at the end in the friendly against Argentina and Loftus, and showcased his worth outright. He he put his name in lights that night. Really, some stunning tries. Tries many wins would not be able to complete. He showed the forethought and the understanding to get through and hit the players on the weakest point. In my opinion, a flaw for many South African uh, wingers is, and even centers, is they they run at players instead of at the shoulders or at the arm. They do not try and break the player. They just try and brute force through. And in course, his steps and ability to to find that space is is only rivaled by his his partner Colby in that front. That he's definitely uh, seems to have more vision in his running. And Pimpi unfortunately let himself down with some poor defensive choices. Now that's not to say he's not a great player. He played some of the, he played against the best teams in the world, especially New Zealand. Um, and to have that happen against them is any player is, is going to be okay with that. So I don't think he, between those two it's a tight tight draw. But I think of course he definitely put his name a little bit higher in in my opinion. Getting to the centres, this is this was a tough one. Uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a South Africa centre pairing. In my opinion, isn't the greatest, and it's it's I think underwritten by the fact that we brought back Fran Strain, Fran Strain for this World Cup, showcasing that I think we do not have enough depth in that position. Bringing such a like an older player into a position, he's a stunning player nonetheless, and a real real great player to have under under uh, under the cosh, but still nonetheless an older player where we have a lot, we should have a lot more talent in this field. So, and since that being said, in my opinion, uh, the best options would be effectively having. Um, Lukan, uh, Lukanya Arm at 12 and Je uh, Jesse Creel at 13. Arm has been outstanding in defense, a battering ram we needed, but also an X Factor player on other occasions, um, putting himself a bit above yesterday's in the net. Jesse Creel, on the other hand, his loose feet and ability to uh, cut through some cut through defenses when given space is really something to behold. And I think you can pair up well with both of those wings. So that's kind of my choice. Although there's a lot of lot to be said for uh, Devin Arlander and Franz Stein. The Arlander for me, my biggest issue is he off, he consistently has a big issue when he becomes the battering ram. The play the style South Africa chooses, so he cannot avoid it. Um, he tends to lose the ball. He tends to not place his body correctly to keep the ball. That is a massive detriment in such a key position. Going on to fly off, this one for me was easy. Pollard, Pollard, Pollard. Um, please don't get injured. Please don't get injured. Yankees didn't have a terrible game against Argentina, but not enough Springbok game time this year has made it a little bit of a not sure. He had a good game, uh, first game for us also. So there's no, I don't think it's a detriment to have him on the field. I just think uh, Pollard has signed his name a lot higher and has definitely put more consistent performances on the field, which is essential in a World Cup. Let's move on to uh, Scrummy. Another great revelation of 2019. Uh, Herschel Yankees, what a player. What a, a performance. And really shows that kind of tenaciousness you need from a scrum off to always, always, always keep going. And I think that's what's put him above, above his playing partners. And that, that youth and optimism is definitely a, a sight to behold and enjoy as a spectator. But Fafta Karak, I think, has 
done enough to give himself that top position, and I'm going to give it to him, although it's good to see the backup on it. Faktakarik is consistently good and has evolved his playing style, um, something that you must commend. He's really from, from a player who used to almost outplay his team. He used to play faster than the players around him. He's matured a lot in the Northern Hemisphere, and, and the Sales Sharks have matured him as a player in the sense that he can understand when the pace is required and when the slowing down is required. He showcased it again in the last Argentina game at Loftus, where he show, slowed the game in the end and cons gave, gave South Africa a little bit of time to breathe as Argentina were playing circles around us for a while. So we'll see how it goes. But I think he's definitely given himself vision. So eight man, uh, I think Dwayne Vermeulen is my choice. They're a really strong, strong player, consistent, uh, bruiser, ball stealer, and all round uh, confidence booster for a forward pack. And I think one of the biggest reasons South Africa's forward pack has picked up so much this year. It's a really, it's really all about just boosting and confidence boosting as 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 they as they need to be up there for the game. They need to be up for the game. They need to be strong and ready. Moving on to the sides, I, I, uh, my choices are um, old boy captain, Kulisi and Peter Stettatoy, a player who's made the position his own from not even being that position. Rassi has found and molded him into a, a, a tackling force and just a, a, a beautiful player for that position. Almost transformed that number seven jersey, which is great to see. Uh, Kulisi... Hasn't had a lot of Springbok game time, but consistently shows hunger when he's on the jersey. So even in the 45 minutes, 50 minutes he got in the last game, showcased it. He has He's hungry, ready, and good. I think his ball-stealing capabilities are a little lacking and could cost him. But at the same time, he definitely makes up for it in many other fields. So it's, it's, it's a tight battle. Uh, moving on to locks, I feel my choices here. It's a little different to the standard. It hasn't been played in a combination. It's probably my, my biggest one. I haven't really followed a combination yet. Is Arches Neymar and Evan Etzebeth in that position? Arches Neymar and Evan Etzebeth play very similar roles. So some people would question this, but I feel Arches Neymar can't be off the field just for his ability to also rise up a team and, and rile a team. And also his X factor on attack. He really knows how to pop a ball and place the ball where it needs to happen. So it's, got, it's just fun to see him play as a spectator. I enjoy his performances. Even Etzebeth in that end really makes the team hurt. He's the kind of player who, when, when you go into a scrum, when you go into a uh, ruck, you're like, okay, is he there, yes or no? And that's what I love about him as a, as a player. He really riles up and confuses a forward pack to make sure that they play our style of rugby, essential to winning a World Cup. Going to the front row, this is a bit of a tough one, but I went to the front row, Harvard and Trevor Nyakane, both great performers, up and coming, and I definitely think the future of SS scrummaging, so I think they should get a chance to showcase that in this World Cup. Uh, Malcolm Marks being my um, hooker, great player, ball stealer, definitely there. I hasn't had the most amazing season. Uh, Bongi Menambi has had some good games, consistency, but his biggest glaring thing is his ball throwing in a lineout is probably the biggest issue that I've had. And that's something I've said uh, multiple times. Both Mal Marks and Bongi Menambi aren't practicing enough on that field. We are, South Africa's ability, losses on lineout 90% of the time is not because of poor jumping or not being able to call right. It's literally overthrows or throwing skew, which are both un inexcusable in this level of rugby. So both of those players need to pick up their, uh, pick up and understand that it cannot be happening in a World Cup as it is a massively costly problem. Yeah, so that's my team, my ideas, my concepts of the tournament. Please let me know what you think. Please comment, like, share it com uh, down below. And add some comments on how you feel the team should play out. Obviously, this is a discussion. I'll bring out some more videos on your opinions and understandings. Yeah, thanks, guys. And yeah, please look out for other videos and other teams. Cheers.